Many people believe the CFA is the best finance qualification in the world, and they're probably right, but it also means it's really difficult, especially if you work full time. So it can be hell, and many people don't get through it. In fact, only around 8% of people pass all three levels first time, and fortunately, I'm one of them, and I managed to do it with 90th percentile scores at level one and two. So in this video, I'm going to share the exact study plan that I followed to get these results. If you're new here, I'm Harris, an investment banker and CFA charter holder who studied at Imperial College London. Okay, let's get into it, and we'll start with study schedule. So a common question I get is, how much time do I need to study each level and the charter on the whole? And to be honest, there's no one answer for this. It depends on a few things. This includes your existing financial knowledge, your current job and how many of these concepts you apply day to day, how good you are at maths and how quickly you learn new concepts. Now there are techniques to improve this and I've covered these in a separate video, the link's on screen. Now, having said this, it took me two and a half years to complete the charter, which was split six months per level and a six month break between each level. And I would suggest if you can, take the exam in the Feb or May window and study over the winter because to be honest, there's nothing else to do in winter and it's easier to stay disciplined. So how many hours? Well, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this. It's more about the quality of studying versus the quantity, i.e. become a more efficient and better learner and more on this later in this video and also the video that I just linked on screen. Now, broadly, the guidance is around three to 500 hours per level, but bear in mind, if you take just a week study leave at the end and do about eight hours a day, that corresponds to around 56 hours in just the final week and you'll probably find that most of your study i.e the hours you put in will be back ended near the exam as a general rule of thumb if you put one to two hours in a day four to five times a week over a six month period that'll be enough personally i'd avoid cramming all your study hours into just one or two days because those study sessions overall will end up being four five six hours long and there's definitely diminishing returns after 90 minutes which is governed by the old trading rhythm that i've mentioned in other videos so generally speaking you can only really do one or two of those study sessions a day effectively uh, so spacing this makes your studying more efficient and effective and also is less soul destroying and finally when should you study i'd highly suggest you do it first thing in the morning because one you are biologically freshest this is proven and two it's an immediate win and it reduces the chance of life getting in the way when it comes to weekends do it first thing and then enjoy the rest of your weekend else you'll hate yourself for choosing this path and three or so years is a long time so you need to find a way to enjoy the process too ultimately by doing it first thing in the morning you don't have the obligation hanging over your head all the time so this relieves some of the pressure okay let's move on to study materials now one of the hardest things about the cfa is that you also have to work alongside it which means you're already pressed for time and then the curriculum is huge and unless you find a way to cut through the BS and focus on the most testable material, the process is painful. So at level one, I used the books for a while and it was horrible. I was just staring at a wall of text. Nothing was really going in. It was overwhelming. And then I spoke to a friend who suggested a strategy that saved me time, money, and helped me smash the exams. Firstly, don't use the books as your primary source of study because it will take forever and you'll drown. Prep providers should be better and they should offer a more engaging experience, should focus on the most testable material and explain things better. However, that's not the case for all prep providers, I would suggest you avoid Fitch and probably Kaplan too and go for Mark Meldrum. Mark has real industry experience so explains things well and also he's funny which makes the study process more enjoyable. Teaching at all three levels will now be shared with Richie Owens who's also a CFA charter holder. He taught the ethics module at level three when I studied and I found him engaging too and I think importantly Dr. Mark will still teach the technical stuff. So I use Mark Meldrum for lectures, review videos and seminars which are deep dives into the most complex material and they really help with first principle thinking which I'll touch on more later in the video. He's also affordable ranging from 370 to 450 US dollars depending on the level which might step up a little bit in 2025 but it'll still be sub $500. So Mark Meldrum sounds amazing right? He is but his notes are not. So this is where you need IFT World. So the second part of this strategy is using IFT World for their notes. So IFT is an Asian provider and they also have excellent lectures which I used at level one. However, their notes are superb. They're concise, well presented and focus on the most testable material which saves a ton of time. Please do not make your notes from scratch. I'll touch on this more in a second. They're around 90% synchronized with Mark Meldrum's lectures, but you can easily follow along. Then I would recommend IFT's high yield notes, which apply the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule and focus on the most testable material, which almost always comes up in the exam. This helps with two things. Firstly, reviews. But secondly, if you don't have enough time to go through a topic, you can go through the high yield notes and this will help you establish the basics, which can be useful in the exam and particularly helps at level one. Now, the main lecture notes cost between 90 
$199 and $185, depending on the level, and the higher your package ranges between $145 and $215, again, depending on the level, and this also includes review videos. Now, I've secured you an exclusive 10% off all IFT notes and lectures if you use my name Harris as a coupon at checkout. It's in the description as are the links. Now to bring this all together, the combined cost of Mark Meldrum's lectures, IFT main lecture notes and IFT high yield notes at level three, which is the most expensive level is $850, which is far less than the likes of Fitch and Kaplan. And you get high quality lecture material and pre-made notes. So it's a no brainer. Level one and level two are cheaper than this. And as I said, if you use my coupon, you get another 10% off this. So it's a win-win. Generally, the CFA is an investment and you might as well make it a worthy one. Just a quick note to say, if you like this content, consider hitting like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. If you'd like to see anything else, drop a comment below. And if you'd like to chat directly, there's a booking link in the description. Okay, let's move on to study plan. So firstly, don't cram level one. You can, but you'll regret it because level two and three are much more applied in nature and they assume knowledge of level one. If you don't have that, you're going to cry. Now, a couple of points on level one. It has transitioned fully to learning modules, which are shorter and more digestible. And there has been a shift away from theoretical topics such as quant, econ and FSA towards more practical and applied ones such as equity, fixed income, alternative investments, etc., which is, I think, a good thing. And also it's more visual in nature, which is welcome. And there's also a practical skills module or a PSM, which at level one can be financial modeling or Python. And both of these are super useful in your job and career. So I think this is also a welcome development. Now I've done a deep dive on how to smash level one, which I've linked on screen. Go check it out. Now, always start with the hardest topic first, AKA quant, fixed income, derivatives, and so on, and not ethics, because they take time to absorb and you'll need to review at least once or twice to fully get your head around it. And a lot of the learning actually occurs away from the desk whilst you're walking, sleeping, etc. So you want to encounter the concepts early in your study and give yourself time to digest them. So in terms of your approach to the curriculum, make the first run through high level and then come back and drill deeper. So essentially you want to have a map of where you're going, understand the core concepts, don't get bogged down in details. You'll have time to cover them during the second and third review. I've covered the importance of this in my learning techniques video, which I've linked on screen, so make sure you check this out. Now, during the second run through, I had rewatched the full lectures for the most complex material, but for the things that you understood pretty well first time round, watch the review videos instead. Now, to enable this pace through the curriculum, you really need to buy notes and annotate them and only make your own notes for the most complex material. This saves so much time. If you make all your notes from scratch, it will take you forever to get through the curriculum and you'll spend more time making notes than actually trying to understand the concepts. Now, I often get asked when to do end of chapter questions. There's no right answer to this, but me personally, I like to do them during the second review. The reason for this is that they take up time and Although they're great at reinforcing your understanding of the concepts that you've just covered, there's a whole side of the curriculum that you haven't yet seen. And that brings with it mental baggage because you're apprehensive about what you've not yet covered. So if you've done at least one run through of the entire curriculum, you know what's there. And during the second review, you can start doing the questions and reinforce your understanding. And finally, as part of the study plan, make sure you employ first principle thinking. I touched on it earlier in the video. It's really important to constantly ask yourself why, draw links between the curriculum and deepen your understanding through seminars. And this will be a superpower at level three. Now, again, I've done a deep dive on this in my learning techniques video. Check out the link in the description. Okay, the last part of this video is exam preparation and technique. Firstly, watch review videos frequently to keep things fresh in your mind. So as exam time nears, I'd recommend one to three review videos every day. Then supplement this with questions. Now for level one and two, the question bank on the CFAI learning ecosystem is more than enough. You don't need any more questions. But for level three, you will because of the structured response component. I've linked my CFA level three guidance video on screen go check that out. Importantly, when you're doing the practice questions, you can use your notes. Don't worry. It takes some time to convert knowledge to application and the questions will help with this, but you can use your notes. Also, the practice questions in the question bank are often a lot longer and harder than what you will face in the actual exam. And they're designed to really test and reinforce your understanding. So don't worry if you get things wrong, just work through them and use them as another means to learn. Generally, you just want to do as much practice as you can. So in the last month, the majority of your study sessions should be spent doing questions. I'd leave the marks for the last two weeks because there's a limited number, except for the level three ones where you'll have more depending on the prep provider you use. So you might want to start them earlier and generally speaking, do them under time pressure and leave one day in between because they are mentally demanding. So don't exhaust yourself before the actual exam. 
Otherwise, I aim to leave three days at the end with no mocks or questions to just generally mop up and sort of drill into things that I was struggling to understand and then try and get some rest, particularly the evening before the exam. Don't be cramming because it's counterproductive. Rest your brain and go in as sharp as possible. And finally, in the exam itself, here's a few tips. So firstly, never spend time on a question where the answer does not come immediately to mind. Use a flag function, carry on, get as many questions under your belt as you can, then come back. Secondly, slow down and read the questions. CFA are very conniving in the way they frame the question. So they'll have most or least likely in italics. And if you skim it quickly and you misread it, you might be thinking about things the wrong way. Thirdly, read the question first, particularly at level two and three. This will help direct your attention to what you need to extract from the information. Otherwise, if you read the information first, then the question, then you go back and read the information again. And finally, at level three, the multiple choice and structured response questions are now mixed. They used to be separate, which meant time pressure during the structured response component. So because they're mixed, I'd recommend you do the multiple choice first because you can probably do them faster and then get some time back to spend on the structured response questions. As I said, check out my CFA level three video. I'll put it in the description as well, where I go into this in more detail. Okay, there you have it. The exact study plan that I use to smash the CFA. If you like this, then you're going to love these two on screen. And otherwise, thanks for your time and see you in the next video.